In this unromantic and hyper-controlled world we live in, I don't always want to know where I'm going. Sometimes I just want to go somewhere, anywhere, and be surprised. I've walked past this road many times and often wondered where it leads. A few days ago, I met a local traditional healer who took this road and he told me it leads to his village. Today, I will be following in his footsteps. I find myself surrounded by pristine indigenous forests. This road goes up way longer and higher than I expected and my asthmatic lungs are not doing so well but it's beautiful here. Yeah. It's a beautiful day, it's a bit cold but indigenous forests all around and I can just hear bird sounds and monkey sounds Way in the distance you can hear the traffic on the tar road but you just walk a few hundred meters up here and suddenly you are in a different world and that is what I like about the lallies it's a separate world and it's amazing The other day down here in the road I met a Sangoma and he told me he lives up here and there's a village up here. So I walked all the way up here now but I got to this gate and there's a car standing here. I see a few private houses here but I don't see a village and there's nobody here I can ask. So it looks like a dead end except if you find a village here somewhere. I see somebody's coming down the road, that's good timing, maybe they can tell me where the village is. Luckily my timing was pretty good because I just got this guy walking up here home and I asked him about the village and he said no, no villages around here. He says there's small dwellings here, little pieces of land, plots of land, people live here. A little community here, in the hills, quiet. And uh, I asked him where He's from and how long he's lived here and he said he's from Liverpool in England and he's lived here for 10 years and he says he's happy, he loves it here. So if you want to escape the world and disappear into the African bush, there are places like this and communities like this here in the hills and the foothills of Transkei where you can just silently disappear and live a life of solitude and quiet far away from all the noisy bullshit in the world. <laughs> Hey man, that appeals to me one day. He also says there is a village way down there, but I probably missed the path. It's right at the start. When you start coming up the hill, there's supposed to be a little footpath to the right. And that's where you walk down to get to the village. And he says, just watch out for the litter. Now this is something you have to get used to in Africa, as people litter. They don't have a concept of throwing it away in the bin. Probably a cultural thing. One would have thought, like by now, people would have changed that culture. But this is something you just have to get used to in uh, countries or places or regions far away from the cities in Africa. You will see people drinking a cool drink and they will just throw the can into the bush. And nobody cares, it's just nothing. 
So if you're from a Western mindset, it kind of frustrates you in the start and you say, why, well, how can you do this? But hey man, it's not my place to say anything. It's their country. It's their way of living. It's got nothing to do with me. So I just accept it down and now people just throw things away. And I think it's just a question of culture and education. And people just don't understand that they're kind of messing up nature. But hopefully one day that will change. Making my way back all the way down to go and find a path to the village. But it, this was good. I mean, I feel refreshed. And it was a beautiful, beautiful walk, so I'm glad I came up here. But let's continue to find the village. I see a path going down here, so this might be it. Down there. The day seems to have taken a lucky turn. Because I've only seen two people now the whole morning here and they come along every time I need some direction so I got to this path wasn't sure about it this guy just walked out here and he said yeah this is the path to the village going down here down this beautiful forest path so let's go check it out this time hopefully we'll get to the village we should The thing about this place, it's the natural beauty of this area. And uh, it's hard to stay cynical here. Yeah, I have become so cynical in my life as I get older, mostly because of other people, because of their judgments, and because of how people treat each other in this world. And if you walk down here in this forest path, ways, looking at the forest, walking down wild beaches, the edge of that cynicism starts disappearing again and you become almost like a a human that believes in beauty and the power of beauty and nature again that's the case for me anyway so this place for me is like healing you know it's healing all the hurt and the pain we cause each other as humans you walk in here next to the beach in the forest and uh, that starts going away slowly and that's the other thing that excites me about the lollies, those towns. The people are beautiful, they're friendly, they're peaceful, the Pondu people are around, they're beautiful people. This lady just walked down here and she told me, go around here to avoid the mud, the path, she showed me where to go. And I mean, it's, it gives you hope again. I mean, look at this, some of the best beaches in the world. And there's almost nobody here. But we're not finished with the forest yet. I just got to this riverbed, dry riverbed, and it seems there's a path going up the riverbed, which doesn't make sense because in the winter a lot of water will come down here. Or the path continues across the riverbed. So I'm just going to cross the riverbed and see where I end up. I can hear voices, but it's more to that side, up river. So, 
I hope this path leads there as well. Otherwise I might have to backtrack. Just came to another river. I have a feeling I might be in the wrong path. So I'm going to turn back and go up the river bed, the dry river bed, where I heard the voices and see if it don't fare any better. That's the log across the river. Probably a natural bridge in the rainy season. And just about 50 meters up here, there's another path going up here. So it's getting to be a bit confusing. Let's see if I make it. What a pleasant surprise. This place is like Wonderland. I can't help feeling like Alice and that I'm in Wonderland now. I didn't expect this today at all. And it's the perfect day. This is so beautiful. So this was completely unexpected. I don't know it's going to be this far. Luckily I brought water. But I met this man, he says I'm close now. What's your name sir? My name is Menz. Menz Apart. And you stay up here in the village? I stay here in the village, in the village. How long have you stayed here? It's been uh, five years. You okay, so you're going to walk to town now? Yes, I'm going to walk to town. The, the, road, the road that we met with you. I'm going to use this one. So you see, yeah, it's not easy to get somewhere. Yes. You work, oh, you live in a different yes. time setup. It's totally different. It takes a whole day to go to town and get basic stuff. Mm. A lot of walking, then minibus taxis. You can't get here on this road with a motorcycle or a car, mm. or even a mountain bike, you'll struggle. Yes. So it's a different time scale. You have to be relaxed to live here. No rushing, eh? Yes, in Russia, that you go a little bit, go down so that you are not going to be as a state. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for talking to me. Sure, sure. <laughs> you said the people up here, they don't speak English. Yeah, yeah, some people, I didn't, I didn't know how to speak English. Another thing, we're in South Africa, but not everybody speaks English in Afrikaans around here. A lot of people only speak Posa, eh? Yes, Posa. The only language that we that are using here is on the course. And most of people are illiteral. They oh. don't know. Illiterate? Yeah, oh. they, they are literal. They are not going to educate it. Thanks, brother. So Safe walking, eh? Sure, sure. <laughs> Welcome to the Lullies. We've made it. It's so peaceful and quiet up here. Silent. No traffic. I can hear a few voices. It's so peaceful, this place here, the Lullies. That's why I wanted to show it to you. That's why I love it here. It's just like a different world, man. If you want to reset your mind and your life, get out of the rat race and just 
unplug. Come take a walk with me to the lollies in Transca. My friend I met the other day, the son Goma, my latest friend, he lives down there, that side apparently. He doesn't know I'm coming here. I don't know if it's okay just to drop in here in the sculpture, I'm not sure. I'm first going to go to the village, which I believe is on the other side. I'm going to see if I can get some traditional beer, some mukumboti, after the long walk. That will be cool. I see there is a gravel road here. There's pylons, I'm assuming they have electricity all over these days. And I'm sure if you take these gravel roads for long enough, you will get to a town somewhere, I suppose, they connect with each other. But I think if you want to buy some stuff and you have to walk and you don't have money for a the taxi, then uh, it's a long walk down the hill here through the forest and eventually you will get to town. I asked this lady, do you know where I can get him Kumboti beer? Because I had a long walk now. I need some beer. She's here. She doesn't want to be on the camera, she's shy, but she's very friendly. She's taking me all the way, showing me where I can get Kumboti. Thank you very much. Got to this lady's house, she makes the beer. Mukumboti, but she says she's all out, but I've got something else here, let's see. Uh, so yeah, this is the designated beer maker of this part of the Lali area. Cheers, nice. I don't have homemade Mukumboti, but they have this commercial one. It's 25 Rand for 2 liters. I don't know, it's a lot. But maybe I can have a drink of this man, yeah. Buy this one, maybe and see. I bet that's 40 lena. That's 40 lena. So, uh, we're having a humko <laughs> boti, and I'm here with one of the village experts on how to drink humko boti. He's, he's poured out the whole thing now, the whole two liter. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Hopefully, uh, we can still walk down the zeros. Let's have some. I got the number. Oh, mama, now I know asylum. Yeah, I don't know it. Ah, okay. So we just go and then I don't forget some booze and fed up. Okay. Oh, it's my turn. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. <laughs> I've drank in it before where it's very sour, but this one is actually quite sweet. This one is a nice taste. Perfect. Very good. Oh, I'm glad I'm coming back out of here. Oh, we're done. The Lalis refer to the rural villages scattered throughout the hills in Transkai, where people live out their quiet lives, separate from the modern world, like they have done for generations. These people are very, very friendly. Um, we had a nice two-litre beer now, me and this man. He says he's going to show me. Oh, okay. He says he's just going to show me where. Yeah. Jongile. Yeah, Jongile. Li Jongile. Li Yeah, Li Jongile. Li Long. Li Jongile. Sounds almost like Chinese. Yeah. He just lives down here. Let's see if he's home. Yeah, he's walk this side. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Hey. The African beer is not strong, it's like, I think, yeah. maybe 3% alcohol, so you can drink quite a lot without getting uh. totally alcohol. I'm speaking to the camera. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying you can drink lots of beer. Yeah, drink a lot. 
Yeah. Like we just clapped right. two liters of beer in 10 minutes now. Yeah. Quick, quick. Yes. Yeah, manas. All right. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Malugu came to visit. <laughs> nah, keep beep. Keep beep here. Obviously subsistence farming up here, so this is a small patch. Somebody is growing something or preparing the ground. Looks like beans maybe. Beans. beans. Yeah, growing beans. This man is going to town now. Yeah. He just showed me how to get to Li Long Gile place. Yeah. He's gonna walk to now and he's going down. Yeah, down. walking that right? this year, no. the 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 root the root row. Gravel E. Gravel. Yeah, gravel D. The jungle, that's the front. Ask for Pikenin. Ask for Pikenin. See, even though we don't speak the... No, we don't speak the... 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 We don't speak the same language. We're having a conversation. I understand what he's saying. He knows what I'm saying. Speak the Greek. Yeah, so my friend. I don't know the food. But I but the walk walk the straight. That's right. Cross. The right way. Greenhouse. So you go like big 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 greenhouse. 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 Next. Yeah, but you go like you must go like. That man says he has to go and look after the cows here in the hills, so that's what he's doing for his days, looking after the cattle. I'm gonna see if Lee Jong Gile is there. Otherwise, I'm just meandering around the lollies. I don't know what town is what town. I'm just gonna walk around and see what happens. See what we find. You know, this is just a different way of living. This messes with my mind often. I don't know how to explain this to people. There are different ways of living than only the capitalist way of status and money. Actually, most people in the world live like this. But you only hear about the, the capitalist system of status and money and communism is dead, it doesn't work. Obviously, yeah, sure. Communism doesn't, didn't work politically, but that's not the point. The point is there's a lot of people that live in a more social environment like this. This is how they live. This is their lives. They don't even speak English here in South Africa. And it's just a different vibe and a different culture and a different way of living. I love this way of living. I straddle two worlds. I live in a Western world and I understand the Western world and I visit this world. But this world is close to my heart. Everything is not about intellectualism and money and materialism. There are many, many, many societies in the world that live in a different way. And not everybody has to be a winner. Or the one. Or, you know, have the car. These people are content with living the simple life and there's nothing wrong with it. It's great. And I think anybody should be allowed to live the life they choose. There's big parts of my life I live like this. And I find a lot of uh, judgment misperception, wrong ideas about me and what I do from your typical capitalist Western person. If you don't get this, you just don't get it. Get this. If you're not here and you're not living this peace and you're not experiencing this peace and this quiet and there's not chasing the big golden apple that you have to bite to be somebody and finally you are somebody because you got there. You got the gold, you got the gold, you got the car. You're now officially not a loser anymore, you're a winner. You know, that's one tiny fraction of the world population that thinks like that and live like that. But it's the only one you hear because the other people are quiet. They're just living their quiet lives in wonderful spaces like this. You know, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, hey. This guy says Shongile is somewhere around there in the felt. I don't know. Shall we back? Say the Mulungu is here. Oh look, look, I'm funayo.
guys out there on a little soccer play area here, soccer field or football field. This is the long Gile I told you about. He's the guy I met the other day. I found you. Yeah, you found me. How are you doing? Um, How are you doing? Oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm sitting here. Lee Long Gile, how do you pronounce it? Oh, yeah. My name is Lee Jongin. Lee Jongile. Yeah. I'm still struggling with the name. So we're sitting here at this house in this foothills. So quiet, peaceful. So tell me about life here, how is it? Yeah, life is good here because we don't have troubles which are staying together and one people and one love so it's good to stay here because you don't find to get you in to the troubles or let's say to the problems you see and it's struggling we find or oh, we find who we, who we are and where we come from like i'm a sangomo where i'm staying here i have to find always myself where I'm coming from and who, who am I you have to be real yeah man like for real <coughs> so what does it mean what does it mean to be a Sangoma oh Sangoma hey it's a secret thing yeah. but are you like a leader in the community um, you do medicine for the people stuff like that yeah what is what, what is the meaning of Sangoma Oh, uh, Sangoma. It's a it's a person they call his ancestors. So when you call, you go, you have to go and pass. After that, you be Sangoma. So you get a calling from the forefathers. Yeah. You see them in dreams. Yeah, for the dreams they sing to a I yes say something yeah you have to do something like that they show you how to manage and how to make it and if you say no i don't want to go what happens yeah the things are happening if you don't want to go sometimes they punish you make like you somebody crazy or you sick always even the struggling with you to your food and not going anywhere just stay one place okay so you get the calling from your forefathers then you have to go yeah. because they're calling you yes and your training as Sangoma how long does it take yeah it's a take too long because there are a lot of things they have to do and I have to wait and do what the things I have to do yeah so another word for me it will be witch doctor which is possibly not a nice word of the best word but you are basically African mystic working with the secrets and it's all secret medicine and all your stuff you do is very secret yeah yeah everything I made it's secret because even my assistant they are secret no one they say about me it's only me I say my assistant and listening what you say I think witch doctor has a very negative connotation but I think every society e ever in the world always had a healer, uh, what we will call today psychologist, doctor, and that's your role in society. But you guys work with the forefathers. It's not only intellectual knowledge you read in books. It's you, you see the forefathers and you speak to the forefathers. Mm, yeah, I got it. Okay. Yes. And the communities here up in the hills, they are very peaceful it seems. And I seem content, I seem happy with their lives. Yeah, we're happy to stay here. It's our community and it's nice to stay here. We don't have troubles. We just sit and feel peaceful. Yeah. And we're living life peaceful. We don't have a lot of troubles. We're going to eat some drug, making drugs, something to make a criminal things. No, yeah. we're just thinking about lens and life to staying here how to manage life because we're sitting here hey they are good life i if like you saw the mountains yeah it's so peaceful i like yeah, it yeah. everybody's just doing their thing 
I mean, I can easily live here. I just want to say thank you very much for giving me this conversation. Obviously, mostly subsistence farming. And depending on the season, there's lots of fish in the river. Avos growing in the trees, in the forests. This time of year, a lot of lemons everywhere. Lots of other fruit and stuff growing here wildly. So, Africa set up, the whole place is a garden basically. You don't have a lot of money, but there's food growing. Everybody can go and harvest in the forest, which is communal property, I'm assuming. Avos, nuts, all kinds of other things growing in the forest. And that's why a capitalist system will not work here. If it's just about who's got the most, who's fenced off the biggest part of the forest, who can gather the most for himself, the whole community will fall through the cracks and fall apart. It won't work. It has to be a communal effort. And everybody has access to the fish and the forest. And nobody is too rich because they harness too much for themselves. Uh, they all have to make it together to get through the season. And that's how it works. And it's been working like this for a long time. So who am I to say, no, it shouldn't be like this. It's a system that works for these people for generations. And this is how it's supposed to be. I'm obviously not saying this is the perfect life. There is no perfect system. There is no perfect life. These people have their strife. They've got immense poverty here. Living on the bread line. Like every society in the world has problems. Every person has problems. That's just the way it is. That's just life. But what I'm saying is that there should be space for people and communities to live the way they have lived for thousands of years. And there's no lesser in this scenario. You want to be a billionaire? Go for it, man. You want to live in a peaceful environment like this with little money? Do it. Whatever. There's not one right or one wrong. This is what makes the free world world interesting. It's a mixed bag, man. The more diversity we have, the better. The more interesting the planet. The better for everybody. So, I'm here to celebrate this diversity and show it to you. And also to build connections. And to connect with people and see what they are about. Oh, we got some goats. Hello boys and girls, we're gonna do some adult stuff here, yeah? African adult stuff. I thought since I'm here in Transkai and I'm doing an episode about the lollies, the townships or the towns in the hills of Transkai, I'm gonna attempt to make my own Nkomboti or African beer. There are different recipes on the internet and they're all a bit different. So I'm just gonna make up my own vibe here and see what happens. It helps if it's hot, if it's summer, it's winter now, because obviously you need some form of fermentation to take place. But uh, I'm going to do my best to see how it goes. For a start, the first day is very easy. It gets a bit more confusing later, for me anyway. But you need maize meal and what they call a malt. So maize meal, that's simple. Malt is, I think King Corn they call a malt, but it's probably different versions of what is supposed to be a malt. I bought this in town, this is already a mix brewer's blend, so I'm assuming those two parts are, are already mixed in this. And uh, I'm going to pour half of this in the bucket. This is 3 kilograms, so 1.5 kilograms. And then we're going to pour hot water in there, and then it needs to stand for 24 hours to ferment. I have to warn you, I'm not a measurement type of guy, I'm a touchy-feely guy with everything I do basically. And the philosophy behind that is, if you just do your touchy-feely thing and you do it enough, eventually you will become your own measurement, or you will 
far to understand measurements anyway. So you will mess up a lot, but in the end, your subconscious will start figuring stuff out and you'll be pretty accurate. So I'm gonna put in some just normal maize meal as well, because I have it here, and I'm probably not gonna use it again, because I'm gonna leave here soon. So this is like, it used to be a kilogram, this is more or less 600 grams now. So I'm just gonna put in half of that as well, more or less. And then you pour in hot, boiling hot water, apparently, according to this recipe I'm following. And then you have to stir it till it has a smooth consistency, pasty consistency. And then you have to store it, obviously, in a place, put a blanket maybe over it, so it can be warm, so it can start fermenting. So let's put in a boiling water. I'm gonna cover it up. Put it in a corner somewhere, a dark corner. Uh, one recipe is quite cool, they say, put it in your prayer corner. So I don't have anything like that, but maybe I can start a prayer corner today. I'm not sure what I will pray to, but uh, maybe just the universe in general. So let's do that, let's pour in hot water, cover it up and put it to the side. We're continuing with the Mukumbati recipe and the first part you're supposed to put aside overnight to ferment. I put mine aside for longer because it's cold now, it's winter, so fermentation takes longer. Also I cheated a little bit so I added a little bit of sugar and brewer's yeast. So it's still bubbling very nicely now and it smells sour as it's supposed to smell. So the next step is to pour this in a big pot. I don't have a big pot so I'm using two pots here, using what I have. And then you add four liters of water according to this recipe. And then you have to cook this for one hour. So you add the mixture, the fermented mixture, in your pots. First you cook your water in your pots, make it boil. Then you add the mixture and then you have to stir it for an hour continuously or regularly anyway. So I think this is a hard part. So it's an hour of cooking and stirring constantly. So that's what we're gonna do now. I got rid of about a third of the ingredients. First of all, the pots are too small and I don't want to spend my whole day cooking this stuff. So, but this is what comes directly from the pot. I'm gonna just decant it into a bigger container. It's cooling down now obviously and I just want to get it to a temperature again where it will not destroy the yeast so I'm gonna put more water in here just guessing but more or less doubling the volume so it's not totally traditional because I'm gonna add sugar and yeast to speed it up and just improve the rate of conversion to alcohol so I'm adding the rest of the dry ingredients and yeast and sugar and you're gonna let it stand for a day or two or three depending on your weather situation and then strain it and then we should have combot it. Bubble bubble toilet trouble. Smells like beer. In this part of the world, the coastline is still wild. 
You don't have to go far to find yourself alone on a pristine beach. It is impossible for me to put into words this feeling I get when I walk a fine sand crunching under my feet, the sun on my skin and the sound of the sea all around. Suffice to say, it fills me with great joy. In this part of Transkai, there is basically two ways you can get to the lollies. One is inland through the forest and the other side is here on the beach. I prefer the beach. In heaven, up the pass of hell. People here on the side are waiting for the taxi. Going to town Friday. I think many people will be going to town. Last time I came up this hill, which was a totally different mission. The road is somewhat easier, but it's still a walk. But uh, yeah, let's see how it looks here, man. So you're on the hills, in the hills. We have the lollies. And down here, amazing wide ocean. Check it out. From the beach, it's quite a steep climb up to the first lolly. The views are spectacular. The mission now is to get my Mukumbori or African beer fix for the day. For a morning at least, and we're gonna take a leisurely stroll through the lollies. I like this side a lot more, it's more peaceful. The dogs even are more peaceful. I almost got bitten twice on the other side, and it's just more beautiful for me here on this side. And the people are really, really cool. You will see all kinds of animals peacefully next to the road. Uh, people are very easy going and in general a very very good experience. This man, I just met him, he came to greet me very nice and uh, I asked him where can I get him Kumboti? He said down there. Yeah, you can go down there and we'll get it, we'll smell yes, it. Yes. And he's looking after the cattle. Yes. What's your name? Uh, my name is Alfred. Alfred? Yes. Nice to I'm, meet you. I'm looking good cattle. Yours? Yes. Yes. Thanks, Alfred. But one day I can show you my house where it is. Yes, I hope so. If Def you can. Definitely. Up here in the village, a sense of peace and tranquility prevails. The violent world of political discontent seems like another planet in another universe. I'm approaching the place where I got the Mkumbati. I can't really pronounce it correctly, it's Mkum. Whatever, Mkumbati, I can't do that sound. My tongue is way too lazy. It's Friday, so hopefully they will have some stock. They will be stocked up for the weekend. But uh, no guarantee. I think they make it when they have the ingredients. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm gonna drink some Uncle Bo today. Do you think they have? Do you do they have? Do they have Uncle Bo They have? Okay. I think she says they have.
often say every town is completely different. It has a different personality in the same year of the lollies. The lollies there at the back on the other side of the forest and the lollies here next to the coast, they are completely different. It's very green and beautiful here on top here and it's a much more tranquil feeling and the people are, are very friendly. It's almost like, a, well I don't want to exaggerate but a garden of Eden type of feeling. And I would easily come and live here, no problem. This man says his name is Kara. Yeah, it's Kara. This is Kara. He says there's people up there who make some kumboti. Yeah, as you're on top of the Jalbezi. He's gonna show me. Yeah, I'm going to show you on top of the Jalbezi. Let's go. I think I arrived at the place, but it's a different place than last, last. It was on another street, so I just want to see if I, if I can get permission to film here. And uh, we'll have a hukum boti. Lots of people sitting here on a Friday, taking it easy, playing some pool, and they drink some beer. They say the hukum boti is very good here. So we're just hanging around and drinking beer on a Friday. It's huge! Huge thing. Look at this. I'm gonna walk it around here on my head and I'll finish with this one. It's gonna be cool. Now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you drink it like this, don't one. Mm. It's good. Had a nice beer there of the boys, and everybody was very pleasant. So I'm just going to take another walk, and then let's see what happens further. Like a lot of people coming home from school. Rungu photo. It means white guy with a camera. Kids loving the camera. Probably TikTok, TikTok vibes. Yes, come sing a song. You say you love me. I sing a song for Katara. Wasn't that nice, an impromptu concert? And this is the Africa I like. Not the commercial, corrupt Africa, where everything is just about money and greedy politicians, but real people in real villages. It actually does exist. The people are just nice, man. Obviously, there's always an underlying thing of money around these parts, you can't get away from it. And this is just how it is. It's like if you white, you are perceived to have money. And often when you come here, people basically just want money from you, which is a little bit sad, but it's life. I mean, money, we need money to live. But that's besides the point. The point is, uh, 
It was really cool and uh, I'm, glad I could, I'm glad I could share that with you. <laughs> On that note, thank you to the people who have supported me so far. It takes money to make these vlogs and at this stage I need your help. So thank you for the sponsors of this vlog and if you want to be part of my journey, follow the link in the description. The thing is, and I think the mistake many people make is when they come to Africa they travel from lodge to lodge. You never experience the real Africa. If you experience the real Africa, it's not real, it's the fake Africa that Africans want to show the tourists. Nothing wrong with lodges, I love lodges and staying comfortably, but if you get out of that environment and you connect one on one with the real people and villages, it's a, uh, it's a different experience, it's a real experience. And if you just jump from lodge to lodge, it's like jumping from a little bit of your comfort zone to another little bit of a, your comfort zone in Africa. You know, what's the point of that? You're basically just still traveling in your little comfort zone. The point is to get out of your comfort zone and then you get the real, the real deal of Africa. Anyway. <laughs> What's your name? Spike Pauline. And what do you do? Well, just walking. In the, uh, the village? Yeah, in the village. And you? And uh, Mr. Sianda. Sianda? Yeah. Because in the end of the day, you want to make a real human connection with somebody. You don't want people to make a connection with you because of your star sign, of your race, or you, if you have money or not, or if you can give them something or not. Because that's not a real connection. The challenge is to make a real connection with people, and that's what I strive to do. So if I have to make connections by buying my connections with money, or, or giving away stuff, I mean, that's not real. Somebody starting the Friday party early. Party vibes going down here. So on my way home, we're stopping here again. And this is my friend Tara. I missed his number. I lost his number. So I saw him again now. Let's go show them in the last vlog I did about Poonskop and uh, we want to bring people here to show them the villages we're thinking about it making a little tour here overnight and we want to do it together so, yes, I'll do it together. so we're just having another beer then I'm going to start getting home and go look after my own beer oh, thank you how come you must drink it? <laughs> I think I'm getting it better now. But like wine or beer, anything else, every brew of traditional African beer tastes differently. They put different things in it, different methods. This one had a funny taste. I didn't like it so much. But uh, yeah, so I met Tara last time I was here and it's so beautiful here. Yeah, if you have a very stressful life and you just need to take a break and go to a place where you can just totally escape reality or the normal Western reality, uh, you know, this is ideal and this recharges your battery so quickly because there's a wild, wild beach down there with a 
big cave and here in the village is so peaceful and quiet it's like the other world out there of all the shit going down doesn't it doesn't happen so I'd love to show this to people so I met this Terra guy he's a cool guy he speaks English well and Koza well and uh, we want to take people in here for like two days maybe with one idea I'll take you to the beach all the beaches and then we'll have some kombote here in kombote and then uh, sleep here one night and sleep in another village and then end the tour going down the forest and ending up in Portugal again so it's a whole circular route of I don't know maybe 20 30 kilometers over two days which would be really cool it's coming soon I hope that gave you a bit of an idea about the lollies or certain lollies this is a very small area obviously they probably all a bit different but I think it's time for me to slowly meander towards the place I'm staying at now this is my last few days here for a while and I don't I'm not sure what's gonna happen next we'll see in the next vlogs I'm still thinking about it and uh, most important of all, I'm still busy of making my Nkomboti at home and I have to go back to finish that as well and show you how to make it so you can make it wherever you are in the world. African beer baby!